Today we're doing the factory style trailer wiring on a 2015 Honda Pilot. SUVs and trucks often have all the wiring harnesses preloaded and you just need to get a kit that adds a couple controls. This is about a one hour job and requires a small variety of basic hand tools. We have here a 2015 Honda Pilot. Standard options and features built the same from 2012 to 2015 for, for the most part. This is the EX not the, or uh, EXL, one of those two. It is not the Touring. According to the Parts Finder website, that does make a difference. To see if we have the trailer pre-wiring, there are just three places we need to look. One of them is here under the hood. There are two fuse boxes. There's one over here in the corner. That's not the one we need. The one we're looking at is right here. It has these three little clips. Lid pops off. And then looking at the inside, there's a list, kind of a legend here. And as long as that legend is facing you upright, then it is in line with the fuses. On the left hand side here we have these larger styles one two three four five six seven positions two of them empty looking down the list third one down here on the left says trailer wiring 30 amp when all is said and done we will be installing this 30 amp fuse that came with our kit in that little position right there all right now we're in the back of the car the second place we need to look is right here in this panel that says aux fuse just pop it off with a screwdriver and looking inside there towards the back we do see a white harness connector that tells us we've got everything we want in this area. Okay, third place we need to look to make sure we have pre-wire trailer harness compatibility is right up here above the driver's side exhaust tip. There is a connector hanging here. This connector here is actually just a blank version of the connector that plugs in there. It's being used as a weather sealing plug. We're going to have to get that off of there, and then we should find that the uh, trailer harness actually plugs in there. We have all three things we need. We're ready to install. Okay, let's see if everything that we expect is here. This box here clips onto here. This here plugs into an existing connector. And then this here holds this pair of relays. This fuse is gonna go in the fuse box up front. And then on the back side, this seven way connector has to be mounted on the back hitch assembly somewhere. And that will then plug into that. And this will plug into the wiring harness under the back bumper. Let's go ahead and do these relays while we're at the bench. Should be identical. Let's take a close look and just to make sure. Yep, same part number, same functional diagram. Should be interchangeable. Okay. This here is just gonna be tucked into the side of the uh, compartment, but just to keep them from wiggling out, I'm gonna bind them together. Now I don't wanna just tie them because there's a space between them and that would pull them together and risk cracking the base over time. So I've got this piece of fairly hard rubber, which I'm just gonna tuck down in there to act as a spacer. And then I'm gonna take one of the provided uh, zip ties and just bind them together so that they act like one piece. And that means that there's twice as many terminals that would have to work loose simultaneously for either of these to loosen up. Quick visual check. Is either of these being kinked inward by the tension of the tie? No. That means my spacer is working as I hoped and these are now very, very firmly in there. And an optional step I like to do since the electrical tape wrap can be unreliable, especially when exposed to heat or elements, is use a little bit of silicone tape and overwrap that. Something to be aware of is that over time the self-adhering silicone tape uh, tends to become hard and brittle. Usually, however, it won't unwind. Another factor to consider is that we will need to do a hole cutout. There is uh, something that looks like it should be a knockout, but it is in fact just a molding and you have to take a hole saw to it in order to mount this guy. There is this keyed cutout here, so unless we want to try and cut an exact size hole and the keyed cutout, which is not necessary since we'll have these screw mounting holes to work with, we measure this way around the keyed cutout, just about two inches. Now what we already have on hand is a two and one eighth hole saw. This will work well enough. Last but not least, mounting hardware. If you use self-tapping screws, don't plan to tap them into the body panel, get those little metal edge clips that slide on and then capture the threads. But in this case, I went to my local hardware store, and just for vanity's sake, I got these little uh, hex cap screws. And then on the back side, they'll have stainless steel nylon collared lock nuts. I've also picked up some stainless steel flat washers and neoprene rubber gasket washers. So the screw will go straight through on the front side, and then on the back side, I'll have the neoprene gasket washer to damp the uh, interface with the plastic so it doesn't just rip it out. And then I'll have the, the uh, metal washer on top of that to support the nut, and then I'll have the lock nut, which won't come back out. So there we go. We have our two main wiring harness pieces. We have the trailer hitch seven way adapter, the fuse that's gonna to have to go under the hood, the mounting hardware, and some zip ties. All right, second step of the install is to actually get in here 
hook up this harness and then plug in this box to the slot tab and do any necessary wire tying to uh, keep things clean. Look at the order of operations. We're definitely going to want to plug this plug in first before trying to clip this on in the way. Otherwise, there's just no hope of getting to it. Okay, I heard the click. It's in. Okay, looking at how this harness is going to end up in there, I think it'd be a good idea to take one of these zip ties that was provided with the kit and just secure this down so it's not flapping about in there. The main thing we don't want to do is pinch the wire so close to the end of the connector that it starts to tear them out or cause a bad connection. But I think if we just cinch that right there. All right, so now that's not going to flap around. Last step then is to go ahead and work all this down in there. And then this just slides onto there. And unfortunately, the plastic molding doesn't quite line up with the tab correctly, so it's not going to uh, snap in. But there's enough friction on there. Yeah. That's as far back as it'll go, but it should hold it in place. All right, this here is ironically going to be the hardest part of our install. These weather seal plugs are always a pain. But there's a little clip on this side which pushes down to release the clip. And then, sometimes the best way is just a pair of channel locks or something. That's the most obnoxious piece of work I ever dealt with. It's out now. All right, well, the upshot of all that is that it is, in fact, weather sealed. We have a nice, clean connector in there. Got some tape starting to unwind from it here, so I'm going to fix that while we're at it. Let's go ahead and get our trailer harness plugged in next, and then we'll work about securing all that back up there. And there it is. I heard the click. Okay. Last step is going to be to get our seven-way connector installed in the bumper and then tie everything back up. All right, I've gone ahead and done two things. I've taken a drill, tapped a couple holes, and then used a two-inch hole saw to get my starting point here. So this is where the seven-way connector is going to go, and I've now drilled out the first hole for the screw mount. As indicated previously, what we're going to do, one of these from the front, and then stack a neoprene washer, a stainless steel washer, and a lock nut from the back. So I'm going to do the first one all the way through, and then do the last three just to make sure everything gets secured correctly. Well, right there's a little bracket and how to conveniently put an M10 by a 1.25 hole, threaded hole in there. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay, right there we have our harness that was originally on the Honda with the new trailer harness tied into it. A few zip ties to secure that back down. The zip ties are wrapped around the plastic uh, connectors and not around the wires. We have our uh, M10 by 1.25 bolt location that was pre-threaded and we've used that to install a wire clamp. All that extra cable securing is very important. That's something people don't always think about. They install it, it's working, everything seems fine. And then a couple years later, it starts blowing fuses. Then finally on the back here by the hitch, we have our seven-way connector. Bingo. All right, now that all the rest of the wiring is done, the last step is then to install our fuse. Once again, this thing facing you, third one down says trailer, third position is empty, and this is where our 30 amp fuse is gonna go. Just pushes in firmly, done. And there you have it, a little worse for the wear on the hands. Otherwise, it's all in, and all we need to do now is connect it to a trailer and test it. Yep, got brakes. Left signal, right signal. Okay, parking lights. Yeah, they're on. Brakes again. Good, turn signals. Left, good, right, we're all there. Has anyone seen my phone?